So we are going to take a uh, mic mm -hmm. and then we go here. We take a mic and then we go there or what? No, I think we do this one. We fine. use this one yeah. and I, I follow. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think then you do the next uh, slide. <laughs> Close the door. Wait, we have somebody. Chase me here. Uh, all all yeah. the speakers here. Yeah, we all I think it's also here. wisdom. Wisdom is here. Yeah. Oh, wisdom is here. I think so everyone is here, right? Also, ich das dann wissen will. Okay. Yes, okay. Thank you. So, uh, in this session, we are going to talk about the crucial issue about the big data supporting the implementing of SDG, Sustainable uh, Development Goals, as you may know. So, uh, there are a lot of uh, data concentration uh, for the uh, kinds of use which can tr contribute to the uh, advancement and also the development of uh, human life and also society uh, kinds of aspect. So uh, we do already realize the importance, significance of the uh, data uh, and uh, its contribution, uh, how to uh, refine how to uh, make most of your data to improve our life. So uh, uh, we are thinking about uh, methodology or uh, uh, partnership, how to build this kind of partnership to improve the connection between the multi-stakeholder, different power 
and the different driving force. So today uh, we are going talking about the uh, policy, legal, and also technical issue, which closely related to uh, big data, which uh, contributed to the implementation of STG. So we invite the speaker from different fields, from different continental as well. So uh, sorry, I can show you very quick about our agenda. So this session is uh, organized by CAST, Chinese uh, Science and Technology Association, which is uh, a civil society from China. And the CAST uh, uh, has been uh, actively engaged in the promotion of open data and uh, a community activity over China and overseas. So actually, we have been successfully held series of workshop uh, in IGF and other uh, platform, different forum with the joint effort from uh, uh, international community. So today we are very pleased to invite speaker from the uh, uh, different uh, uh, stakeholder like uh, private sector, academy, community, uh, and also government. So uh, I would like to give you a very brief introduction about the speaker, then the, our speaker I invite to deliver their viewpoints about the issue I mentioned, and uh, followed by a short discussion. Then we have a current remark about uh, our uh, Big Data for SDG workshop. So uh, the speaker, uh, Professor Liu Chang from China, she is the Secretary General of uh, Big Data Working Group of uh, uh, Geographic Society of China, also Editor-in-Chief of Global Change Research Data Publishing and Repository. And also we have uh, Dr. Andreas Blas, she is the Vice Chair of NGO Committee on Sustainable Development from New York. And Professor Ricardo ba uh, Israel Robles from Mexico, and Dr. Wisdom Donker, uh, President and CEO, Africa Open Data and the Internet Research Foundation. Uh, Professor uh, Sheriff Dello, University of Garzenberg, Senegal, and he is the head of ICT Department of Science and Technology Faculty and the former National ICT Director of Senegal. And we also have uh, Dr. Horst Kermer. Uh, he's from Committee of Data and the International Council for Science and Technology. Uh, also, he's the Secretary General of CoData Germany. And uh, I am Zhou Xiang from the Chinese Camp Science. I'm also the member of the Coordination Board of uh, Asia and Oceania Geo, which I'm going talk about, about the regional cooperation on uh, big data to, in support of implementing SDGs. So uh, that is the brief introduction of our speaker. Then I would like to invite our first speaker, Professor Liu Chang, to deliver his um, presentation, please. Thank you. Uh, this, uh, I'm so glad to have this opportunity uh, to focus on my topic uh, on the big data solution uh, from uh, government, uh, governance to practices for SDGs. Uh, uh, we so, talk sorry, a sorry Professor Liu, uh, can you just use this uh, controller? Uh, okay. I'm going to play the presentation here for you. Oh my goodness. Please just wait oh, uh, a few seconds. This one? Uh, work? Where? Doesn't work? Yes, please. Is there? No. No? Yeah. no. Yes, no, no, yeah. it is. Is there? No. Oh, good. Uh, yeah. Big data solutions from governance to practices for SDGs. Uh, okay. Yeah, 
So we, uh, uh, five years ago, we have an uh, uh, international uh, workshop. Uh, we make uh, data uh, sharing principles in Nairobi. So we call this as uh, Nairobi data sharing principles. So in the, uh, uh, several organizations uh, the, uh, assign these uh, principles, 10 principles focus on the openness. So quality, timely, open, and free, and, and the uh, open uh, and the standard, operational, uh, and, and so on. So all these 10 uh, principles, so is focused on the make data openly available for all. So not only for the local institute, for the national, but for the international. So this is the uh, basic uh, principles. How to make this principle to be action? So uh, we work with the several organizations, uh, so make this uh, as an example. And uh, based on this example, we developed the guideline. So this is what we call focus on the uh, global change, research data publishing and sharing. So this is the uh, main, pa main part of the website. Uh, there are uh, uh, data set publishing and the data paper publishing also. Uh, so this is the journal. So we make a poor review all the data, data set and data paper, data descriptions, so all poor reviewed. Make the data quality control. So the, then the we publish the data and make the data networking. So we call this as acting locally, networking globally. So we make the, all the data as a DOI, give the di digital object identifier. Then uh, we link to the world data system, and then link to the, uh, the uh, DCI, data citation index. And then uh, we work also with the uh, info developing countries. So this is the, uh, right now there are, uh, also we work with the journals. Uh, there are 60, more 60 journals join this uh, partner, uh, including in China, USA, and Japan. So this is the users. So they are not the five years, uh, 97 uh, uh, countries users uh, download the data. So you can see more, almost uh, all the world, uh, except uh, uh, in the uh, African, in West African, so next time, so you join this, definitely to use the can uh, to share the data. So this is uh, uh, it's a benefit. And then uh, uh, I think that uh, uh, many people like this. So this is the example, this really we want to know. So this got, uh, last year got the VCS prize. When this year I have a, this, this, there are some material there. This is very, uh, it's, a, it's a new data site, the global coastline and the islands. So this data site, you can see, uh, uh, answer these questions. How many islands, how large land areas, and how long of the shoreline in the world? All vector data in meters resolution based on the Google Earth images. So they are so all this, so I said everybody can free download. I think this is not only, so we can hypothesis comes and go, but the data stay forever, and the quality, timely data. So I think this is an example. Uh, so now this, uh, last month, uh, in the CoData International Committee on Data for Science and Technology have a meeting in China, in Beijing. So joint developed the Beijing Declaration on Research Data. And in this declaration, the side, and the more and more research discoveries will, will depend on driven by the data. So data more crucial. So in this case, so we will emphasize, we call all of you to jointly, to have to join as a partnership for for enhancing the open 
data and the knowledge environment in the world. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Liu. Uh, actually, uh, I have uh, an update uh, new list of uh, panelists. Uh, my fault to forget to introduce uh, one beautiful lady as our panelist, uh, uh, Mrs. Uh, Janice Hafadir. It is, yeah, sorry, from Ministry of Education, Tunisia. So she are going to talk about the capacity building and education later. Welcome. So our second speaker is, uh, oh, I just, uh, too much work for me. Beth? Okay. Ah, the beautiful lady. Uh, and Andreas Bass, you have the floor to speak. Hi, everyone, and I'm delighted to be here with you today. Um, that's the way we can talk about the SDG. Uh, most of the time when people talk, uh, heard about the SDGs, they don't understand what it means, especially if you don't work in, inside the UN or you don't have nothing to do with uh, a, an organization working with the UN, you, you don't have no understanding. Hey, the SDG is the goals um, put by the United Nations to all uh, the government first. It was uh, distributed to the government. They say this is a goal by 2030, um, how we going to move the planet or move the world. And um, I, um, as a stakeholder and NGO at the same time, I uh, try to see how inside and outside can work together. I'm a climate reality leader, a mentor. I uh, work uh, closely with uh, former Vice President Al Gore uh, on the climate issue and awareness. And inside the UN, I work as a vice chair of committee and sustainable development. I work closely with um, all stakeholders as a way we can uh, debunk uh, what the SDG mean. The 2030 uh, Sustainable Development Agenda, um, if you work with the UN, you understand. If you don't, the core principle of the agenda is uh, universality, leaving no one behind, interconnection and vulnerability, and inclusiveness and multi-stakeholder partnership. And how that's going to happen if you don't know what is mean? And the core principle of my organization try to make sure people understand what it is. And the agenda, we are committed for all country, irrespective of the income levels. Because sometimes we make agenda out or we, the UN, uh, put the rules without understand. I don't think the agenda can work for the same way you work in Africa and the Caribbean, the United States or Europe because we have a different income, we have different form, um, form of life. The core principle leaving no one behind. We want everyone to be inside. And I always say you don't understand my, the way I work because you never be in my shoes how we can together understand even the single mother, the student, the person working with municipality, the person working in the government, how we can together put this, work into the same idea to go forward, that's the way the SDG can be. We, call, I say, we have to get everything to be correct. And most of the time when we go to the annual uh, report and data, what the civil society said and what the government report say, they never match. Most of the time, they always got a discrepancy. How stakeholder, the government, the people, civil society, student, and the one who got to stay, how we can, even individual, but how collectively we can um, understand the SDGs. I always struggle inside the UN when they're talking about inclusiveness. 
and sometimes I feel I'm not included. And I don't think it's the only me. I think they have a lot of people when they go to the website, when they listen to the UNGA, when they listen to a lot of, of agenda, and they are say, where did I fit in? Multi-stakeholder partnership. This is the one I really love about the, all the 17 goals. We need partnership. We need everyone. Student, sometimes they say the student, yes, they understand. Because the era of some era, now the, the kids, are, the youth are more active in certain aspects of the society. They want to be involved. I remember before when my age, I couldn't ask my parents certain questions. Now the kids is so open and it's, it's up to us to give them the answer and what type of answer we're going to give them. And our organization, we put all the 17 with five Ps. If you can remember to work with the five Ps, you will cover the SDGs. It's people, planet, partnership, peace, and prosperity. This all conclude the 17 goals. If you do not retain anything about what I say today, just remember, you need to be aligned with those five Ps. People, planet, partnership, peace, and prosperity. Including partnership and peace is a win-win situation for all of us. Because with respect and put we respect my right and your right, respect my need and your need, I think that's the way the SDG can probably uh, reach the goal in 2030. Because when you put all the goals together, sometimes you say, he's not possible. Because they still have people, part of the world, who cannot eat. They still have problem with health. They still have gender equality. They were still using so much food and wasting so much food by the time a lot of people cannot eat. You got the planet, you got the, we call it emergency, and some people still doesn't understand it. How we can make that 17 goals possible for 2030? Partnership. We have to revitalize the global partnership for sustainable development. The government cannot do it by itself. We cannot do it by itself. And the kids can protest all the want. But if we do not use the correct data, also change our policy, our mindset towards certain goal, I don't think it will be possible. What is matter? We need everyone to come together. Government, civil society, science, academia, and the private sector to achieve the sustainable development goal. All the resources, they are online, but a lot of people doesn't think it is that important to go through them. They have a lot of, um, clip video the UN put out each time to see how people can understand it better, how outside of the UN, for people who doesn't work inside the UN, can understand it. That's the way we can do it. Every year, uh, they have a progress report, a uh, track data uh, to, to, about the SDG in every country, sent to the UNGA. The UNGA is the assembly um, they do at the United Nations in New York, where all the government come in to give um, the data and what the progress the country have been doing. Most, most of the time, the civil society is not included on it. Our courage, if you work for the civil society, reach your local government and see how you can put the data you have, 
the actual fact you have, that's the way they can put it in their data when they send it to the UN, it can be more accurate. The implementation, the SDG is all of us. Who are the SDGs go? We are. Because without people, they do not have SDGs. If we all of us think as individual and as collectively who the SDG was created for, who can apply it, who can implement it, I think we can move a better direction and also we can have a better data. Thank you. Thank you, Andres. So we still have a, a few speakers behind. We are a bit behind the schedule. Uh, may I uh, remind our speaker to keep your speech in eight minutes? If you can save time, I will be greatly appreciate. Thanks. So next speaker is uh, Ricardo from Mexico. Please. Thank you very much. My name is Ricardo. I am from Mexico. I'm from the university called Escuela Bancaria y Comercial. Thanks for the invitation. Uh, we talk about the legal frameworks from data exchange and in deep cooperation at regional and global levels must be developed. And I try to answer the question. Okay. Okay, whatever. But the political consideration will legal frameworks be developed for the rational development and the use of big data for various purposes at national, regional, and global levels. In this sense, and according to my area of expert expertise, I will focus on the regulation aimed at education as one of the goals of the sustainable development goals. Education has found an, on the internet a powerful tool for its proper development and use. Leaving aside the issue of risk in the use of the internet for another workshop, I will focus on the benefit of the use and regulation of big data and effective tool to obtain quality education in Latin America hand in hand to, of the international community policies. It is a fact that Latin American countries have created laws that attempt to regulate the proper use of the exploitation of data obtained from the network and the protection of the confidential information has been one of the important goals that governments have tried to regulate. As I say, the last year in Paris, Mexican laws regulate and recognize the protection of personal data such as human rights. The same happens in large part of Latin American countries. I have noticed that the protection of human rights and the protection of personal data has been a recurring theme in several spaces in this forum. However, I consider that it is important to create laws that promote the protection of personal data obtained from the network and big data. But it's also, it is necessary to create laws that promote the use of information for the benefit of the population as a human right of access to data for their benefit. In this way, laws must be created that promote the proper use of big data as a, tool, as a tool for quality education. The question is, how can data exchange and, and big data be used to meet this goal? Thanks to the big data, different academic institutions can obtain personalized information from each of the students to make a specific and special improvements. In addition, it can be guaranteed that obtaining data can be anonymous just to detect the trends and statics of the information obtained from big data. Moreover, the academic community can participate in observing the areas of interest and apathy and design a current strategy to increase the adequate quality of education at different levels. Among the proposal to promote quality education is the use of technolog technological tools 
such a blockchain and smart contracts that will also serve as instruments to obtain data as well as control and protect the information contained in many virtual education platforms, include Moodle, Blackboard, WebEx, etc. This will bring peace of mind not only in the students but to the parents of the students in case of underage students. It is a fact that the private sector has had considerable and active role in Latin America countries, specifically in Mexico. However, it is also important the proposal that the governments of the different countries of Latin America been to create domestic laws that promote the use of the information of they obtained from the big data to increase the quality of the education and celebrate multilateral agreements to exchange data with the other countries, countries in Latin America and the international community. We must remember, finally, that these political affairs and legal framework must respect always the protection of personal data and achieving quality education in developing countries, thus in increasing the quality of life in society. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Ricardo. Uh, our next speaker is uh, Winston. So please let me play the presentation files. Mr. Moderator. Uh, my name is Wisdom, the President and CEO of Africa Open Data and Internet Research uh, Foundation. Um, I'll be talking uh, <coughs> within the perspective of uh, Africa and then uh, what Africa needs to do uh, if we want to get things uh, moving. So uh, I'm looking at a team uh, developing development of the digital economy uh, and emerging technology in Africa. So in the context of uh, the digital economy and then uh, the attainment of the SDGs and then the African Union uh, Agenda 2063. So um, I'll do a small reading here before um, I highlight some points. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, the SDGs calls for tracking progress at global, regional, national, and subnational levels, um, leave no one behind, with indicators for global monitoring and additional indicators for thematic monitoring, as well as regional, national, and subnational indicators. So for us to be able to do this, uh, we need a robust data production and tracking system um, we need to be built in every country so that achievement at a national and local level can be assessed and fed into the wider global framework. framework. These national mechanisms uh, will need to be effective and integrated and will help countries to optimize their resources and actions to reach the goals. And Yes, so the, I have a, the question is, um, has Africa as a continent done well in its uh, developmental agendas? Yes, some parts, yes, and the other parts, no, and we'll be looking at it. Uh, so for us to be able to achieve uh, the 2030 agenda, we need to uh, align some of uh, what we do uh, with re regards to uh, the use of open data. And so I have this. Uh, I have this on the screen. So for us African to be able to uh, achieve the sustainable development goal, we need to look at uh, certain aspects of uh, what we do uh, in Africa. And then the first thing is uh, strengthening uh, sensors and survey surveys 
we need to look at that critically in Africa, our census, how we conduct our census, how we gather our data, how we use the data and all that. And then the next one is utilizing administrative data. Uh, in Africa, almost every institution, uh, data is being underused uh, in the sense that, let's take uh, in my country, for example, when you go to the Ministry of Agri, they have a lot of data sitting there, administrative data sitting there, uh, they don't know the use of it. Even feeding this data into national policies and all that uh, is a problem. So we have to look at that uh, within Africa. Data disaggregation is another issue, exploring new types of data, and even not to talk about geospatial data. How do we gather our space data and all that? It's unless you open data, yes, uh, uh, most African countries are now adopting the initiative uh, citizen generated data. Uh, we also need to look at that uh, data coming from citizens and all that. Uh, big data, yes, uh, data communications, uh, man managing data ecosystem is also another issue. Uh, evidence based decision making, funding and uh, capacity building. These are all things that we need to look at critically uh, within Africa for us to be able to. Uh, reach the 2030 agenda. Uh, for us, um, to be able to, uh, if we're able to do all those things uh, well, uh, there are some expected outcomes that we need to see. Uh, the first one is uh, data producers uh, will be very clear uh, about their responsibility with regards to uh, uh, with regards to data production for the SDGs in the short, medium, and long terms. Uh, data users will be facilitated in finding information and, and will have fora where they can also interact with data producer community. And then the national statistical system uh, will have a clearer picture of uh, resources. Um, these are some of the goals that uh, if we are able to tackle very well uh, Africa, uh, we will we'll achieve, uh, we we'll, we'll start building an industrialized, inclusive, and resilient economy, uh, create an, an equitable, healthy, and disciplined society. All these things uh, need good data for us to be able to read the 2030 agenda. And um, going forward, um, my organization, we've done a bit of work within Africa, then we've identified three teams that need to be uh, tackled critically uh, within Africa. The first one is addressing the data gaps. Uh, in Africa, we have a huge data gap that we need to address. The first one being administrative data. When you go to our various institutions, our various ministries, uh, the way data are collected is poor. The way we use data is poor. Most of these institutions still use the manual uh, way of gathering data, which is uh, the hard copy. Everything should be typed, uh, no electronic uh, kind of data. So we need to look at this uh, critically and then address them. And then the second thing is um, we also need to encourage data use. Uh, in Africa, we uh, we really don't, the data is not even available for us to use, even the, 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 the tech communities, the big data hubs that we have, the, IO, the IoT hubs that we have, the AI hubs that we have, data is really not available. So we really need to encourage the use of data uh, to empower uh, citizens. And then uh, the last thing is uh, strengthening the data ecosystem. Yes, uh, we also need to look at that within Africa. Uh, we need to strengthen everybody, bring everybody on board uh, within the ecosystem and try to address um, some of the issues uh, of data for us to be able to uh, even feed uh, this uh, data in this uh, SDG reporting platforms and all that. So we need good quality data. And then the ecosystem is very important. Uh, so in conclusion, so the SDG and the, uh, the African Union agenda and their company indicators present both an opportunity and challenges, challenge for 
Africa data ecosystem. And um, we've increased um, international and national attention given to the importance of data. Data producers and users will have the opportunity to harness the moment to make lasting improvements, but must first acknowledge the numerous challenges that must be uh, overcome. Uh, so I think this is what I want to uh, bring forth for us to see what we can do to help uh, Africa. Thank you. Okay. Thank, thank you, Winston. So I would like to invite the chair to deliver the next uh, presentation, please. Thank you very much. My name is Horst Kremers. I'm uh, working here in Berlin, and uh, I'm very much appreciated being invited here um, by Professor Liu Chang um, for um, uh, giving my thoughts on um, what I uh, said, the topic uh, SDGs and beyond, uh, challenges for partnership in United Nations instruments, operational coherence. Now, this is some buzzword in United Nations language, uh, and I want to give you my personal opinion on the background of a professional lifetime in uh, geoinformation, environmental information, risk information, SDGs, of course. Uh, I want to structure my, uh, to, I apologize for not having a, a, a formatted presentation because my invitation to this panel was a little bit short, uh, only two days and spending so much time here. My, I structure my uh, small remarks uh, in uh, talking about the tasks, the challenges, management principles, then you need a roadmap, what to do, and elements of governance needed. The tasks. The tasks are defined actually uh, in the text of the core and neighboring United Nations instruments, like um, not only SDGs but UN Habitat, UN Sustainable Development Goals, um, United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change, International Pre Platform on Biodiversity, um, IPBES, Human Rights, Children's Rights, we know here, and uh, working together with United World uh, Food Program and many others, the health system and so on. So it grows cross-cutting through more or less all the United Nations uh, topics. What as a information scientist and informatics oriented uh, uh, colleague, I uh, took a special look on the on the requirements that is really written, at least in the recently uh, updated and uh, formulated uh, United Nations instruments, is gaining or ensuring coherence. In a, I say in a technical sense. There's a legal aspect and, and so on. But in a technical sense, it's um, information management, it's administrative legal coherence. It's about cross-border coherence. Coherence with state-of-the-art professional practices, interdisciplinary standards. Coherence with security and safety domains. That is my personal uh, field of also um, deep action on um, UN, UN Sendai framework on disaster risk reduction, which also belongs uh, has, a, has a big overlap in SDGs. The United Nations with their declarations and instruments, they correspond to national or European implementation laws, regulations and directives, acknowledge the coherence requirements, but systematically investigations, especially mutual semantic mappings, are not supported in, at the moment in adequate ways. Nevertheless, the task formulated is a little bit complex, but nevertheless, we, it's, our, our work is based on existing experiences. The previous ex achievements in the fields of environmental information and geo-information in, 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 uh, in detail, 
show that there are certain complex domains that we already have the possibility of uh, going into the detailed, detailed uh, data definition for a special uh, clearance of that. The challenge is, is that the underlying information management efforts need to cope with the complexity of actors and organizations involved. And what I want to mention is it's not just the indicators, sorry. Uh, indicators are the top level of the top-down approach. Those people, those colleagues who are practically working with the data on the indicators, they have their own problems at the moment with the, with the technical definition of that indicator system. It's rather complicated, but if you start data from top down, it's no, it's, it's, it can be anticipated already that you run into a little bit difficulties when you come from basic data to aggregate to these indicators. So what we need to keep in mind that below the indicators, there is a real world that is that myriads of facts uh, lying around in databases and needed to be uh, made operable. The complexity of data available certainly calls for test beds of best practice to verify in different analytical and decision supporting environments. These kind of test beds, as you can imagine, from the point of view of big data, a test bed for SDG, let alone the overlap with the other instruments, uh, a test bed of that way is not just a small um, um, venture. So uh, nevertheless, I think it's necessary to get a little bit more belief that you have these data and if they're in analyzed on any one of the continents of any kind of research group, they can match their kind of analysis to the, uh, to the analysis uh, um, results that other groups uh, made. And this certainly would be something that uh, our citizens would appreciate very much to see that it's not just a single study, but it's a general reference frame of data that uh, we're talking uh, about. Then we need a systems management and engineering approach, convincingly that shows the necessity for transparent procedures of documentation documentation, assessing, decision-making, support, action, and goal-reaching control on the data level side in very dynamic situations of highly complex actors, specifications, and boundary conditions. This allows providing comp comprehensible, objective, trustworthy information to all actors. And what I want to mention in special is including media investigative data journalism that is our control institution on uh, they are independent of the typical data organizations nevertheless data journalism is going into exactly uh, the thing to verify uh, that everything is in order um, and uh, applies to the ethical principles and so on so the management principles applied, there is a set of management best practice methods, especially supports critical thinking, enabling in extensive reporting, transparent analysis, compliance to regulations and other boundary conditions and constructive goal-reaching control. Not just we are aiming at something, but to control it on a real realistic level. These control obligations include phases of retrace, audit, re-examination, analysis, avoidance of malpractice, data malpractice. You wouldn't believe, but there is data malpractice around, so we have to uh, be a little bit uh, sure about it. And uh, indications on weaknesses, vulnerabilities of the information system. Another well-known and identified challenge is the strengthening of data integration based on accepted information infrastructure concepts. 
and comparable to existing complex implementations. Now, that is what I said. We have that experience on the, in the field of geoinformation and environmental information. There we go really drill down until the original field measurement, not only field, but also remote sensing for satellites are also. Huh? Yeah. Can, can you make it quick? Oh, yeah, yeah, because yeah. we have a, no, no, no. a few speakers. No behind. question, no question. It's eight minutes go by. Eh? Sorry. The, um, let, me, let me conclude then, uh, to be short. Um, the open science and open government is a culture to strengthen mutual trust and innovations through transparency and cooperation in the interplay of the institutions involved and especially with civil society in the private domain. To strengthen the resilience of these relationships for the future, then that is a goal that these relationships will remain robust in the future and state institutions, services and infrastructures will be more appreciated through openness. Because only the steady cooperation allows knowledge and empathy between different organizational cultures. It is United Nations best practice to enable cross-organizational information availability and coherence for international, national, regional, local actors, strategies, decisions, and actions. The United Nations Data Revolution Group, you may be not aware, but there was a data revolution group only in 2014. They had a very interesting report, but one of the central statements was data are the lifeblood life of decision making and the raw material for accountability. Let's do something together about it and join forces for making that an operable venture. Thank you very much. Thank you, Horst. Next, uh, we welcome Professor Dello to give you a presentation, please. Thank you very much, moderator. Uh, good morning, everyone. I am delighted to be here to talk about capacity building and education on big data for SDZ. Uh, my speech will focus uh, after introducing big data and data revolution. I will talk about opportunities before talking about capacity de building development. The amount of data in the world is more and more increasing. By some estimate, 19% uh, of the data in the world has been created in the last two years, and it is projected to increase by 40% uh, annually by year. A last share of this output is uh, data, uh, we can say that uh, quickly, is uh, big, big data, which is a product by uh, data from uh, mobile phone, credit card processing, and social media. Data is growing because it is increasingly uh, being gathered by uh, inexpensive and numerous uh, information sensing mobile devices, and because the world capacity for storing information has roughly doubled every 40 years. The data revolution uh, is already transforming society. Advances in computing and data science now make it possible to process and analyze big data in real time. Uh, the integration of this new data with traditional data should produce high quality information that is more detailed, uh, timely, and relevant. So what opportunities from big data and data analysis? Data collected by the private sector will help predicting epidemic, spreading, mosquito burn, pandemic, remote propagation in social network, movement of people in riot, etc. So big data analysis can help in saving lives. Uh, for example, from information uh, sold by a mobile operator, for example, it would be possible to improve road safety. Uh, then sharing of uh, medical analysis data could also help better refine research into a genetic and non-genetic factor for the manifestation of certain diseases. 
data is the livelihood of decision making, as he said, uh, the previous speaker, and the raw material for accountability. Today, in the private sector, analysis of big data is commonplace with consumer profiling, personalized services, and predictive analysis uh, being used for marketing, advertising, and management. New sources of data, such as uh, satellite data, new technology and new analytical approach is applied responsibly, uh, can enable more agile, efficient, and evidence-based decision making, and can better measure progress on the sustainable development goal in a way that is both inclusive and fair. So, uh, big data for sustainable development goal, we can understand that in uh, 2015, the world embarked in a new development agenda uh, underpinned by the Sustainable Development Goal. As if this goal requires integrated action on social, environmental, and economic challenges. Many government, I'm sorry, I forgot to switch slide. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Many government still do not have access to adequate data on their entire population. So big data can set light on disparities in society that were previously hidden. For example, women and girls who often work in the informal sector or at home and suffer social constraints on their mobility and are marginalized in both private and public decision making. Most of the big data with the most potential to be used for public good is collected by the private sector. As such, public-private partnerships are likely to become more widespread. Then, what is the main uh, goal in capacity building and education uh, 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 team for, uh, on big data? for a sustainable development goal. First, uh, we can talk about uh, fostering and promoting innovation to fill data gap, funding and mobilizing uh, resources to overcome inequalities between developed and uh, developing countries and between data poor and data rich people. Then, leadership and coordination to enable the data revolution to play its full role in the realization of a sustainable development. We can also talk about developing and supporting projects with local resources, uh, like universities, local business, and then uh, developing research on big data for development and generate capacities among researchers in support of the SDG. Then building the path for SDZ reporting and delivering fair access on data and tool for everyone. In this topic, we can also add uh, work on apply big data for development innovation, including big data analysis and capacity building in close collaboration with private sector companies and policymaker. Uh, also develop capacity among researchers, uh, focusing on activities linked to measuring progress on the sustainable development goal. Declining prices and improved functionalities of data analysis software will help to democratize data users. And so uh, in capacity building, we can also insist to uh, promote open source tools users in order to broaden the mechanism for people to conduct big data analytics outside of proprietary and expensive software packets. For the last two points in capacity building topic, uh, one must uh, work to develop perspective on issues related to big data uh, and marginalization, privacy, security, right, ethics, and competition. And then 
uh, improve government service delivery, complement official statistics, and facilitate development in sectors such as health, urban development, uh, transportation, and humanitarian response. To conclude, as we can see, information provided through big data can help countries overcome information gap, uh, expand official statistical, uh, statistical uh, operation, and generate evidence-based policies. For example, big data can help predict optimum climatic condition for crops, reducing the risk of economic losses for farmers, also, the use of big data uh, also can identify critical areas of crime or vehicle congestion, providing key information to help policymakers structure policies to address challenges. In this way, capacity building and education on big data could help strengthen current use, uses and application of big data for sustainable development. To achieve this, a way would be to develop research on big data for development and generate capacity among researchers in support of the sustainable development goal. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Chair. So next, uh, I give floor to the Ines. Thank you very much. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Ines Hafaid. I am from Tunisia. I work for the Ministry of Education. Uh, thank you very much for the invitation. Uh, this is my third time participating with the China Association for Technology and Science uh, in a panel. Uh, so today I'll be talking to you about uh, SDG 4, the quality education, which I believe as a teacher is a pillar to uh, many of other SDGs. Uh, so uh, when we talk about uh, big data, uh, I am talking today about the impact and challenges on education and the way forward for developing countries, as I am from Tunisia, uh, uh, a, a country which is very developed at the educational system, but economically si still considered, considered as developing country. So first, uh, for us in Tunisia, we need uh, to give more background and more education and more lobbying to the ministries of education, because we, still, we are still in need of a big data center. So first we have to explain how this is a growing and promising field of knowledge and that uh, it has already affected many industries and how it can affect uh, positively the educational system. So uh, the advantages of big data are in education. So uh, we have, it provides a numerical representation of academic results and uh, outcomes. So as teachers, uh, let's imagine that you have this set of data, this uh, a huge amount of data where you can uh, uh, have uh, and know what are the weaknesses of your students, for example, in language, in writing, in listening, uh, in comprehension, etc. So this help will help you a lot in your teaching practice. Uh, it offers uh, the ability to focus on specific groups of students, uh, for example, the fast learners, the slow learners, the, P uh, the students that we have and uh, who have some um, difficulties in education, difficulties in pronunciation, and also, uh, for example, the students who have some disabilities. Uh, it helps determine how effective certain policies and initiatives are. For example, the, uh, some initiatives were, um, were made by the Ministry of Education, but we do not really have a follow-up on this. We do not really know how effective that was. Did we gain anything from that policy? Uh, schools and universities uh, have enormous amounts of data, uh, so with the academic records and test results and grades, this can help the universities. For example, I teach at, the, uh, at high school. Uh, we had my colleague uh, from, uh, from the higher education. So this can help higher education institutions to tailor actually the courses and to see what is trendy and what is interesting for the students for them to follow at university so that they don't have too much loss of results for example, and of teachers. Um, so this uh, 
could help in the student learning, uh, also the adoption of technologies, and I'm all, always a uh, fierce uh, advocate of adoption of technologies in education uh, to improve the effectiveness of test score data analysis. Uh, this will help us as teachers to tailor education to each student's needs, his level, his pace, his speed, etc. And uh, this also will help uh, parents, uh, especially at high school and primary school, to uh, be more involved in the education education of this, uh, their kids. Uh, this also will help us to have better assessment of quality education. And uh, as I am also a teacher trainer, for, uh, this can also help us in better training for teachers. Uh, and for governments, of course, uh, this will uh, offer more organized and focused allocation of resources in terms of financial resources and human resources like teachers, etc. So there are challenges, of course, and this are, I have to focus on this because big data is not st still not very well developed in the educational system in Tunisia. So the challenges has, have to be explained to the ministry uh, representatives. We do not have enough big data on education yet. In the Tunisian educational context, the opportunities it provides can only be assessed judging from its use in other fields or other countries. This is also a big challenge that you are going to the ministry to lobby about something, but you don't really have results. You're just going to give a comparative research from other countries and other applications. And uh, also the fact that uh, amassing data uh, fuels heated debates on the privacy policies, students and, and the students and pupils' privacy rights and also that we have fairly limited technical capabilities on that. So what is uh, what I am, uh, the point of my presentation today is to think about a way forward for big data in developing countries. Let me first start, start with a fact from the UNICEF. According to UNICEF, 60 million children won't have the opportunity to attend primary school by 2030. 60 million, it's not a number, these are students. They will not go to school by 2030, which is right here. Uh, we are 2019. And the global rate of school enrollment has stagnated since 2007. So what we need to do? Promote better data gathering. Improve the effectiveness of technical measures in data compilation. Uh, big data should be applied for social and educational good. We have to show the impact of uh, big data on the educational sphere. And using big data for mapping every school and assess its overall performance, leading to targeting the lacunae and weaknesses of uh, the schools first in general and the students in particular. This mapping, uh, by the way, will help a lot in uh, allocation of resources uh, from big organizations and uh, companies and governments as well. We have to work on agreeable privacy policies that balance between the advantages of big data and uh, while protecting the learner's privacy because this is the right to, ha to be uh, uh, to have some privacy online and to be safe online. We do, so we have to agree some, on these privacy rules. And finally, and uh, most importantly, enlarging the stakeholder discussion and opening up the, to public private partnerships to bridge the digital divide through big data so that it actually bridges the digital divides and does not enlarge it. I thank you very much. Thank you, Inés. So that's my presentation. So because we don't have so many time, so I just uh, want to give you a very, uh, I mean, practicing example of how we do realize the importance of uh, open data on implementation of SDG. As you may know, Earth Observation is play very important roles for uh, evaluating and assessing the performance or the progress of uh, implementation of FCG in local, regional, or global level. So, as I mentioned, international uh, or intergovernment international organization also very important power to promote this kind of activity. So, uh, here I would like to introduce uh, GEO's activity. As you may know, GEO is uh, inter 
government uh, organization, which consists of more than 100 member countries and also uh, 110 participant organization over the world. So uh, we have we have been done a lot of work on analysis or evaluating the power of observation in uh, supporting in support of uh, implementation of FDG. So there is the example you can see. We try to align the power of this technology to the uh, objective of SDG, uh, two, three, or uh, four, 14, 15. I mean, all this, uh, uh, the Im Im implementation of these uh, goals can be well supported by the observation data, as mentioned. And also, we have a survey on EU user for SDG by two member country, as mentioned, you can see uh, there is a very growing concern for uh, all different countries. Uh, you can see from the right bottom figure, this is a very specific indicator showing for the uh, uh, current use uh, observation for NSDG analysis, and there are a lot of countries they are, they are wanting to use the observation for uh, implementation assessment of SDG. So, uh, GEO is a huge uh, organization, but uh, very uh, specific, specific, specifically focused on the work of Earth observation. So it has uh, three priority areas. Uh, today we are talking about of uh, sustainable, uh, oh, sorry, I've made the, okay. So uh, SDG is uh, one of the priority area, and also disaster and uh, climate change uh, are expected to play more important roles for GEO. So uh, how do we link the GEO activity in different level? Because uh, as I mentioned, we have uh, a different phenomena of different action on a different level, global level, regional level, we found that it's very uh, effective or it's very um, powerful uh, methodology to promote the uh, implementation of uh, earth observation in the regional level. So uh, because uh, the GEO was uh, operating the cargo's mechanism, Asia Oceaneer was one of them. So we choose uh, AO as our Target. We try to build. A, we try to build a, a regional level uh, cooperation mechanism to promote of this activity and the regional level. So, uh, just like the colleague mentioned, we are focused on the improving the observing ability of this region. Also, promote the data reuse by develop data products and the information extraction and the processing capability. Also very important the data sharing service to reduce the gap between the different country. And also a network for promote uh, the technology and uh, uh, method that's very important. Uh, very uh, important thing for this region, every country uh, uh, foc uh, is focused on the application of the advancing technology, especially as observation. So we build a, a structure. This is uh, can be in a different uh, layer. So we have a foundational task focused on the data sharing, data processing that aim to promote the ability of each country by the uh, linked activity at the regional level. We also have some uh, uh, regional issue to tackle with, like uh, agriculture, sustainable agriculture, disaster, and eco ecosystem monitoring. Then we choose the three sub area, like uh, high mountain area, small island states, and also the river uh, basin system to try to uh, make a representative of this uh, research uh, target. So we compare it as this methodology, try to uh, use uh, observation to support uh, uh, in realizing SDG. So as you can see, we build, we aligned the each goals of SDG to the activity of our uh, regional 
uh, initiative. So we, the concrete activity include a workshop, academy, uh, also the uh, training workshops in different country, uh, like uh, uh, China, Laos, Nepal in last year. This year, next month, we are going to have the, uh, another training course in Sri Lanka. So uh, there are also a lot of projects that were conducted to promote the use of uh, and uh, uh, utilization of the observer observation information uh, try to help the local people. So uh, for the next, uh, I totally agree with the proposed from our colleague, capacity building and data sharing is very important uh, issue for us to thinking and uh, take a measure to go for go uh, way forward. So, okay, thank you. That's, that's my presentation. So, uh, we do have uh, quite a lot of presentation, but we still have uh, a few minutes for discussion. Uh, maybe if you have a question or comments to the presentation uh, for the speaker, please. Any question? Maybe from our panelist. Mm -hmm. Yes. Most streamers, Berlin. Um, I just want to make a statement that that I, um, I'm very much uh, uh, appreciate the discussion about the educational fields that are so diverse. Also. I'm very happy you started from school to university to scientists. Even scientists need education in these new techniques that we still don't have. So we have a full education curricula on all levels, let alone people in administration, people in technical organizations that support disaster risk. Of, uh, uh, in, involved in climate change and, and sustainability uh, issues. Uh, this, is, this is something where, where education is so essential uh, that we somehow should organize uh, a little bit more uh, a strategic way. Okay, Ines. Um, thank you very much indeed. Uh, I believe that we, we are really in need of uh, real partnerships. Uh, for example, uh, between developing countries and developed countries, because we, are, uh, we have a huge thing, it's called big data. It is very lucrative economically, socially, and at the educational system. But at most developing countries, we are still at the level of explaining, please, let's use big data. Please, we can find ways and frameworks for protecting the privacy of students. And at the same time, we can gain a lot from this uh, practice. Uh, so now we are still at the level of lobbying and uh, raising consciousness and uh, also we need exactly to provide education to government officials uh, on big data and uh, I'm really looking forward to maybe today actually to f find some partnerships to do that and to achieve that. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. Thank you. Uh, yes, uh, I just want to add to uh, Ines. Uh, there is this initiative, uh, Global Open, um, um, is it Global Open Partnership. Also, uh, I don't remember the name fully, but then uh, that is where uh, almost every country sign on uh, to commit yourself to start a process of op opening up your data uh, within your country. I think once that is done, then the do donor agencies can begin to look. Uh, uh, in, within your country and to see the kind of support uh, that they can give you. I think the World Bank is very much uh, supporting countries that are opening up data. So if your country has this open data initiative, uh, you can as well be looking up to the World Bank or the World Bank can even come to you and say, we have this amount of money for you to uh, kind of promote your open data initiatives and and all that. So um, I, I can give you information uh, with regards to that and how your country can sign on to that partnership. Um, 
the most available tool we have now is the internet. And if you look at that, thirty percent of uh, the world youth are digital. I don't see anywhere I go, even I go to the developed country, everybody have a, have a digital um, uh, phone. And that means it's easy to access to them, uh, to access them online. And we had four billion do not use the internet. And 90% of them are from developed country. How are we going to use data to reach out to those people? And I think that's why partnership and collaboration is very important. Okay. Anika, Anika. Yeah, this is actually there uh, from our experiences. We have two ways to get to be involved uh, in the partnership. One way, we have a joint project. Uh, or, or we can uh, join the uh, meetings, conference, something like today. Uh, this is one way. Another way, we don't know to each other at all, but that's the data product oriented. Right now in the data publishing, uh, we have uh, almost 1,000 uh, data contributors. Most of them I don't know, to, I don't know at all. But they, we check the data. We communicate us through internet. And then the data make us to be involved as a teamwork. And also users from 97 countries, we don't know who, uh, who is who. However, so we, the data make us together as a team. So I think as a partnership, we have a different way. We innovative way was through the internet. So the data oriented, data sharing, and the data principles and make us work together. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Any question or any comments? Okay. Yes, um, I just want to um, add to what I just said. Uh, we also have um, this organization, International Aid Transparency, uh, International Aid Transparency Initiative. Uh, this is an organization that is also promoting open data. And then they have a lot of funding uh, for countries that want to uh, do one uh, project uh, on open data within uh, that country. And, and also, my organization has been championing this open data within Africa for some time now. And um, any country that is even finding difficulties in uh, open data policies, we can as well come in and then help. And we are currently in about 11 countries, and uh, we are hoping next year we are going to cover the rest of the African countries and then see how we can uh, help them uh, kind of sign on to the open uh, partnership and also try to help them with uh, other um, uh, programs, capacity building programs and all that. And also, we are also open up to the China Association uh, for partnership uh, in Africa to see how we can, we can help our people uh, come out from uh, some of the just basic, basic things that we, we need to solve easily uh, moving forward. Okay, good. So, anyone want to say something? No? Okay, I think uh, uh, we have a very good and uh, impressive talk from our panelists. Uh, if I remember right, I think we get very good points from this uh, workshop. Firstly, I think uh, uh, the data, no matter scientific or technology, and the data for the different industry, even private sector. So uh, we, we can think about uh, uh, more data should be opened widely and uh, util utilized efficiently. That means we need to develop the, the legal framework which can provide strong support for the, I mean, uh, data sharing, even the data sharing uh, principle especially for developing country to fight uh, unbalance, to end poverty, to support people uh, uh, for a better life. I think uh, uh, that's one 
first, uh, I mean, uh, common concern from our panelists, that means very important, big data will play very important roles for uh, uh, society and uh, economic development uh, and also the implementation of SDG. Uh, and the second, uh, in my understanding, uh, the implementation of SDG requires a different level. I mean, the contribution or effort from different uh, stakeholder, multi-stakeholder, government and uh, civil society, private sector, even the individual. That's, I mean, it's not easy, but uh, it's, uh, I mean, uh, need uh, everybody contribute uh, to this work. So I think uh, uh, our panelists propose very good methodology and the solution. Uh, capacity building, education, that's very important, still very important for the developing country. That's why, I mean, arose this issue during the IGF, I think uh, uh, it's a common concern as well. Uh, thirdly, I think, uh, as I mentioned, uh, it's a very uh, huge task uh, which requires the different uh, force to convey the different resource like uh, uh, investment, human resource, uh, uh, intelligent uh, uh, property, I mean, different uh, uh, input to promote the uh, implementation of SDG by using of big data. So it do require some um, different methodology. Like I mentioned, maybe we can do it at a lo local level or exchange ideas or experience uh, to enhance partnership between the different countries at the regional level. Uh, then scaling up to the global level to, uh, to find a better solution for mutual development. I think uh, uh, it do requires uh, everybody effort to, to make it happen. So uh, I, I think uh, today we have a very good uh, uh, workshop. Uh, even we have a, a very large issue to discuss, but we do analysis the, the, this, uh, 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 I mean, uh, this issue from the legal, from the technology, uh, from the best practice, and uh, even some uh, uh, suggestion for the next uh, step. So, uh, firstly, I will uh, say thanks to our panelists uh, for your very uh, impressive and uh, good contribution to this uh, workshop. And also, thanks everybody for your uh, participation and the interest in to this workshop. So, now I will say this is ending of our workshop. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Yes. So, the, I would like to invite our panelists to take a group photo here. Okay. Okay, good. Thank you.